Greetings. It is a pleasure for me to share my thoughts on humility on this great occasion where we are celebrating Paulo Freire. Freire taught us the significance of cultural action for freedom. And bearing this in mind, I shall be very careful to not attempt to bank Paulo Freire's ideas. Instead, I shall merely seek to express what I have learned through engaging with Paulo Freire's work over the last 20 odd years. Freire's taught us that the ontological vocation of all human beings is to become more human. This is an idea that I find very attractive, perhaps because it speaks to something I'm very familiar with. Under Ubuntu, the African moral philosophy, we say that a person becomes more human through the ways in which that person engages with the world. To the extent that a person's ways of engaging with the world enable others, enable communities, enable the things in the world to become the most that they can be. And the obvious is true. To the extent that a person harms others, to the extent that a person harms the environment, their humanity is diminished. So indeed we say of a person, oh, that person is a person, when a person behaves in a way that enhances others in the world, the th other things in the world, and of course in turn enables themselves to become humanized. The question that arises is, what does all of this say for what it means to be a human being? Tomasello, Michael Tomasello is quite uh, insightful for me in this regard. He teaches that unlike other animals, we as human beings are very altruistic. Our cultures are formed on the basis of this altruism. In the case of other animals, their cultures are based, unfortunately, only on or predominantly on imitation and other exploitative practices. We as human beings have this great gift of altruism. Altruism, which he describes in terms of three main sets of practices. Practices of giving, sharing, informing. And on Tomasello's view, this altruism becomes the base for how we create shared common ground, how we create a shared identity, what he describes often as a we orientation, how we create joint projects, shared intentionality. All of these things mean that for Tomasello, altruism is the basis for human cooperative culture. We are able to productively cooperate in ways that are unique in the animal kingdom because we have this great gift of altruism to an extent that other animals do not. We are unique as human beings because of this. I will suggest, therefore, that for us, participation is of immense and unique value. Participation being a set of practices that involves acknowledging that we and others are capable of, deserve to be granted a share in the commonwealth. I read the idea of participation in this instance, drawing upon the etymology of that word participation. 
But more importantly, what I'd like to say is, let's read participation as political. Let's read participation as something that demands of us as human beings to ask questions of redress, to ask questions of democracy, to ask questions concerning who gets what, from whom, when, why, how, and so on. Let's see participation and relate it to education. Let's see education as fundamental to what it means to be human. What makes us unique, let's recall Tomasello, what makes us unique as human beings is our altruism. And that altruism enables us to form human communities under which we develop cultures, cultures that develop and enable us to ratchet up to ratchet ourselves up, up and beyond some of those difficulties that would otherwise ensure that our lives are brutish and short, to use a well-used phrase. Education, says Paulo Freire, is a political activity. He says, and I'll further dwell a little bit on some of the things that we know from Paulo Freire. It is not just about regurgitation of learned material. To be educated is to be liberated. To be liberated, I imagine, uh, from some of that brutishness that makes life short and miserable, short and vicious. It is to be critically conscious, to be educated. It is to learn to read the world and to learn to act in the world in ways that one imagines should make the world a better, kinder place. Education affirms our choices, our freedoms. Participation is about education. And education is about participation. Now, of course, we live in a world under which pride, narcissism stand in the way. The colonial age, the current age, is an age dominated by pride, by narcissism. Writing in the middle of the 19th century, Zorin Kierkegaard, the father of existential thought, taught us, in the little book called The Current Age that, influenced by the media of their time, people were splashing about in shallow waters, pretending that they were in great peril. I think that what Kierkegaard said then applies now. We splash around in shallow waters, pretending we are in peril. Not realizing that we are surrounded by altruism. We are afloat on a sea of altruism. Not realizing that we, like the fish, are in water. We, like the fish, shall be the last to discover water. We, like the fish, shall be the last to discover, perhaps, how human altruism that we experience through and in participation, that that is our true strength, that that is our true source of freedom. Narcissism prevents that. And the logics of colonialism that foster certain types of pride, certain types of pride that prevent us from loving, respecting, granting dignity, approaching with well wishes, approaching the other with well wishes. How do we overcome 
this narcissism. I suggest with humility. Snow tells us that to be a humble person is to recognize your limitations, is to take those limitations seriously and to thereby foster a realism in your attitudes, in your behaviors, regarding the self and regarding others. This is no mean feat in the context of today's world. We live indeed in strange times, in strange places. The South African philosopher Samantha Weiss writes an interesting paper titled, How Do I Live in This Strange Place? She's a white South African. And she suggests that given the history of apartheid, it is necessary for white South Africans to humble themselves and to allow others to speak. I suggest, drawing from Paulo Freire, that all of us need to learn humility. The humility to not just place ourselves as teachers, but to also place ourselves in positions where we accept that we are also learners. All teachers are learners and all learners are teachers. There's great humility required in order to build a more just world. Drawing upon these things that Paulo Freire has taught me, I have faced classes of 1,500 students. I have realized that I cannot imagine myself being the source of their knowledge, of their learning. I cannot treat them as empty vessels. Instead, I sought to create an environment, to foster an environment in which they and I could cooperatively, altruistically enhance each other's humanity in ways that enable an, a set of learning processes to emerge. And I can say with great gratitude that we, have, that we achieved over a great number of years remarkable results. Now the question arises, should the oppressed be humble? Is it decent to ask the oppressed to be humble? Paulo Freire teaches us that the humble ideal is for the dominated to save their dominators by saving themselves. That in the process of emancipating themselves, the oppressed shall set everybody free, can set them, can set everybody free, and they're the only ones who can do this. This is a remarkable thing to say and a remarkable thing to think. But it is a thing that can really best be understood by thinking about the immense power and authority that comes with the humility of the oppressed, who do not have time to play with pride, to distance others for no good reasons, who are deeply committed to the creation of a better tomorrow for themselves and for everybody, realizing that that humility, that altruism will set everybody free. Realizing that humility contributes to human flourishing. It is the base for human flourishing. It is the gateway to human cooperation because it bears these gifts of altruism. It takes us back on a road to that innate altruism that our cultures have er eroded slowly but surely. Tomasello in his experiments, experiments with infant children. And it is infant children that show that we have this altruism. In a sense, the challenge that is upon us is to return to that childhood innocence. But to do so with critical consciousness, a critical consciousness that speaks of that deep maturity. 
we are talking about the birth of a new Ubuntu, a new humanism. One that I, in my experiences, have learned a great deal of through reading, engaging with the ideas of Paulo Freire and indeed practicing those very same ideas and ideals and remaking them according to my contexts, according to my conversations. And I hope that today we shall have an opportunity to further engage upon these. Once again, let me say I'm very grateful for your time and for this great opportunity to talk about the ideas of Paulo Freire.